Hello, hello, Mordimers here, and welcome to the game recommended by one of my subscribers. So here we go. This is the first game of the World Championship rematch between Steinitz and Chigorin, played in Havana in 1892. And first match was lost by Chigorin, and in this second um, match for the World Championship title, he started very bravely. So without further ado, let's see what happened um, in this game. This is very very, very beautiful game. We have e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop c4, bishop c5. We have Italian game and now b4. Evans Gambit. So how to start against the world champion? Um, you know, you play the first game, you know, you lost the, the, the first uh, uh, match uh, and then you start with the Evans Gambit because why not? It's the 19th century. This is the way to go. Uh, of course, Wilhelm Steinitz accept bishop b4. We have c3, bishop a5. And now the main line would be d4 and after taking then castle. Very sharp and uh, very rich in the in the tactical hits games. Uh, however, here in this position, Chigorin actually went for the castle first uh, and this allowed uh, Steinitz to go for the, for the d6. Uh, we have d4, bishop g4 now pinning this knight. Um, and nowadays in the 21st century, we have still couple of games in the database and black is doing pretty well here so uh, for example queen on b3 we have couple of games mostly won by black uh, also bishop uh, a3 can be the idea a uh, queen a4 looks like the strongest move in the position actually uh, we have the game one game won by white interesting but in this position actually Chigorin went for bishop b5 uh, and the idea is to of course pin the knight now how to react for that uh, it looks like there is some threat like d5 but it's not really the case uh, first we have e takes on d4 c takes on d4 and now how to continue as black it looks like knight g to e7 is the strongest move in the position and the point is that d5 is not that dangerous because we we always have this a6 move and, and after d takes on uh, c6 a takes on b5 uh black actually stands pretty good here i have one extra pawn can castle also uh so not really a problem here however we have bishop d7 so uh, wilhelm steinitz tried to be um more solid here but is this uh, you know solid uh, for now yes however after bishop b7 uh, he played knight c to e7 asking to exchange them the light square bishops uh, of course this light square bishop isn't that great so uh, why not bishop d7 queen d7 uh, and now we have knight a3 so obvious plan of Chigorin that the knight would like to uh, come to c4, but not through the d2 where it could be potentially an um, exchange, but rather through a3. The problem is that black could go for something like b5. b5 is a move recommended by the engine. He's of course uh, defending c4, so this knight would have to change his plans. Uh, so that would be one of the ideas here. Also very natural knight f6 uh, with the idea of of simple idea move the king to the safe position okay if you play against Evans Gambit your priority should be you know bring the king to the to the safe square however we have very strange move knight h6 knight h6 uh, with the idea probably after e5 so um, Wilhelm Steinitz definitely anticipate that move is gonna happen so he gonna jump to them to the f5 uh, he was not mistaken in this case however it's still uh, not that great uh, of course we have knight c4 as planned and now bishop b6 we have a4 threatening a5 so uh, the bishop would be trapped this is why we have c6 making a space for the bishop Bishop. and now um, the the weighted move uh, everybody was waiting for that move we have e5 asking to open the center and now actually taking that pawn opening the center is the best what uh, black can do uh, so first of all uh, if the, the pawn takes then of course black gonna exchange the queens and castle and everything is fine if the knight jumps 
then still queen can come to, to e6, let's say rook e1, uh, and black still can castle, okay? So this is the most solid way to continue. However, Steinitz uh, blocks the center. So he feels that, okay, my king is not going to um, make the castle. However, it doesn't matter in this position. We have knight d6 um, attacking the, the king, of course. We have king f8, and now bishop a3, moving the bishop to this uh, diagonal. So, uh, of course, king g8, and now very silent rook b1. The idea is actually to uh, push e5 and then the rook, of course, can attack um, on b7. Uh, but now we have knight h to f5. And uh, in this position, Chigorin actually didn't go for a5 as, as he probably wanted at the beginning. Uh, but this was the, the strongest move in the position. And Lasker, who analyzed this game, said, uh, why to make all of these complications uh, if you simply can win with a5? a5, then uh, the bishop has to be moved, and doesn't matter where, bishop c7, because the rook is coming to, to b7 anyway, uh, and it's just, you know, devastating, because you even cannot take this knight, because the pawn gonna take with the double attack, and the position gonna be squeezed, this also knight can, can jump and, and attack on the f7, and so on. However, Chigorin, uh, in the spirit of 19th century, sacrificed this knight. And look at this. Knight f7. Not much choice for, for Wilhelm Steinitz. If he doesn't react, if he doesn't take the, the knight, then of course uh, white gonna win the exchange. So um, there is not much choice here. King f7. And now e6 sacrificing the pawn uh, with the idea of making a space for the knight. So sometimes we uh, sacrifice the pawns also to make them the space for the other pieces, very often for the for the knights. So for example, here the knight can jump to e5. Uh, but for now we have also double attack on the queen and, and the check on the king. So uh, the queen cannot take because, um, because of the fork, so that's not possible. This is why we have king e6 and now knight e5. And look what just happened. So what Chigorin got is the, the king in the center he sacrificed the knight for that but look at this the bishop controls two squares this knight also control another two squares so the king has nowhere to go uh, only this way this is the only way so now uh, chigorin has to find the way how to checkmate the king the queen is under attack uh, Lasker actually said that, okay, queen e8 could be played. However, after rook e1, um, the queen e8 is played before because uh, queen h5 is the, is the natural plan here. This was played in the game. Uh, so queen e8 would be the strongest in the position, but it's still losing. Um, now, of course, knight uh, c6 is the very serious threat. Discovered check. Uh, so king f6, let's say, and then g4. Uh, and the knight, uh, if the knight is Move, then then all of this is disaster so the knight is lost uh, I will just show you the variation with the with the knight moved um, then g5 is coming and if the if the pawn is taken then the queen g4 and um, this position is just lost this knight gonna be lost and um, yeah king is in the center and all four pieces you know uh, works on the on the checkmating it so and it's not possible king e6 is not even better because knight c6 and after king d7 then rook e7 of course winning the queen uh and the game so uh, queen e8 was possible but it's not that um that you know uh great lasker recommended but uh the engine doesn't really agree with that. We have queen c8 by Wilhelm Steinitz, uh, but it's not helping. We have, of course, rook e1, uh, pretty natural, uh, but here, actually, Steinitz had the, his chance because he could go for some moves like c5, um, which after a couple of moves is not that attractive. However, bishop a5, uh, and there is a one line where white actually sacrificed the exchange, and we have the end game with the exchange up for, for black, but black doesn't have the, the rook still developed, so uh, it's still problematic, uh, or moved rook to e2. 
Uh, but then after rook e8 the king actually can escape so white now can win the, the material back but black uh, also can um, can go to the safety uh, and this is completely equal position the material is equal the position is equal the king can escape um, to the safety um, and so on however Wilhelm Stein is in this position didn't go for bishop a5 but he played more natural uh, move king f6 just avoiding this attack on c6 with the discover check um, and uh, and now she got an answer with queen h5 as planned g6 and now first eliminate the knight so we have bishop e7 and now there are a couple of options to calculate now uh, so of course bringing the the king to them to the set to the e5 isn't that attractive because after king e6 uh, this is of course the worst because black even don't take them the, the bishop so knight g6 and you already can see king d7 uh then queen f5 and this is you know checkmate in three moves so uh it's not an option knight e7 slightly better but it still leads to the checkmate because of knight g4 king f7 and um, and now white actually can sacrifice the exchange rook e7 king e7 queen g5 and um, and yeah if the king stays in the center the rook gonna join and uh, and do the checkmate and if king d7 uh then the king cannot escape over there because uh this diagonal is very weak so the queen always can can jump so for example knight f6 king c7 uh, queen e5 and as you see the the king cannot escape through the through the bishop or to the to the b8 square so king d8 and this of course would be the checkmate uh, also not the option king g7 probably the best but it's still not enough because queen g5 and we gonna have the, the the checkmate very serious threat so for example bishop d4 doesn't work because we have this checkmate queen f6 um and then uh it's 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 a it's the checkmate on the f7 or if the king tries to escape this way then there is the checkmate on g5 so this way or another there is a checkmate so queen e6 would have to come to defend them the f6 square uh but still knight g4 is coming uh the queen is under attack so queen f7 uh but now we have bishop f6 the king has to be moved king g8 uh, and now rook e7 finally uh, if the knight takes the rook we're gonna have the the fork here and if h6 is played then uh, it looks like could be okay however after knight h6 again we have the we have the fork here and after rook h6 rook f7 king f7 the problem is there is some move like g4 attacking the defender of the rook okay uh so black gonna lose even more material and the game gonna be queen for the rook so um that's gonna be of course a lost game this is why steinitz said uh, okay so at least i'm gonna take i'm gonna lose this material i'm gonna get checkmated so uh, let's take that bishop which it's uh, very very dangerous here uh, and now of course we have knight g6 so double check we have king f6 and now knight h8 and here Stein is decided that the knight not gonna escape really that this pawn with defending e5 maybe that's gonna be some escaping square so making a little bit more space first he decided to pick up the pawn creating two connected past pawns but first he has to survive the attack so queen f7 is very tempting and it's uh, indeed it's, it's of course winning king g5 uh, then rook b3 uh, however Chigorin played a more precise size move first rook b3 so now this is the much serious threat uh, but also it allows steinitz to to defend f7 which doesn't really help but we have queen d7 and now rook f3 so bringing the rook on the on the third rank to the f file now pinning the knight we have rook h8 uh, eliminating this dangerous knight and now we have g4 so uh the knight is under attack we have rook g8 
And here again, Chigorin could just finish the game uh, in the simplest way and just rook f5 is, is enough, okay? Uh, if the queen takes, then of course the queen can take the, 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 the queen, no problem. Uh, but the king can escape to the corner. So this was uh, this is what uh, Chigorin wanted to avoid. King g7, it's still winning, however, it takes a little bit longer. So rook g5, uh, king h8, and with the bishop on this diagonal, the king king could be quite safe over there uh, but as always you know there are some tactical um, hits so rook g8 king g8 uh, and now after queen g5 check there is a rook e7 uh, and white gonna deliver the checkmate on h7 and if uh, black decide to actually uh, defend that square which of course is possible the problem is there is always some tactics like rook e8 winning the queen and the game so uh, rook f5 was possible, but Chigorin decided that first queen g8 and rook f5 can be played anyway. And at least now the king cannot escape. Uh, and here Steinitz actually could go for some tricky move like king f7. And uh, this, this would be very, very sneaky. Look at this king f7 and uh, white cannot take the knight. I hope you see that if the knight is taken, then black gonna win the game because this pawn is pinned. So pretty sneaky idea, uh, but Steinitz didn't play that. What white would have to play in this position is queen h7 with check and with the, uh, another attack on the, on the knight. And now this is completely winning, of course. Rook g7, rook f5. Um, if the queen takes, then of course the queen can take um, on f5. So bishop f6, uh, queen h5, rook g6. Uh, and here to go through this defensive, uh, white would have to do something um, something different. Rook e3 first, bring the rook to the f file. If the king comes to the to the g7, then bring the rook to the h file. Deliver some checkmate, for example on h8 or h7 up to the position. Uh, and uh, if not, if d4 is played, then rook e2 f3. And uh, look at this, the, the, the rook is pinned, the bishop is pinned, all the pieces are, are pinned. So king g7 now, uh, but now we have g5. Uh, so the bishop is under attack, so bishop d8. Um, and now h4, very important move. First, defend this pawn. Uh, otherwise, the rook together with the with the bishop can attack um, and exchange some pieces, which would be unnecessary. And now, very simple plan: rook f8 uh, followed by the queen h8. This is the checkmate. Not much black can do. Can try something like um, queen e7, but it still doesn't work. Rook f8. The checkmate is coming. If the queen takes. Uh, then of course after exchanging everything this rook is hanging at the end so it doesn't work uh, sacrificing the rook on the on the g5 also of course doesn't work because uh you know the material is uh, just in favor of white two rooks for the for the bishop of course this is uh, winning so king f7 would be tricky it would be very simple trap um this knight is not really recommended you know to take it because that would be losing uh but we have rook g6 by wilhelm steinitz attacking the queen uh, and now white have to play some move uh however in he in this position actually rook f5 works as a charm so chigorin plays rook f5 with check and in this position wilhelm steinitz in the first game of a world championship rematch uh, played in 1892 resigned and he resigned because now there is uh, the queen doesn't control f5 but of course can do it by very nice skewer so after queen f5 we're gonna have a queen f8 uh, win this queen this way so king g5 and of course the position is completely uh, won by white this is why steinitz uh, of course resign after rook f5 and uh, check 
And that's all for today. However, I would like to just tell you that I'm gonna cover more games uh, of this match. This was very intriguing and very beautiful match with a lot of drama in the last game that would happen that uh, I'm not gonna do any spoilers but this this match was just insane definitely in the future I'm gonna I'm gonna cover all of this match uh, and for now if you like this game press like if for some reason you don't like it press unlike and if you don't want to miss any other games on my channel press subscribe smash the bell button thanks for watching and see you in the next one